What we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about sound. First, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Corey Pereira. Uh, I am a local audio professional. I am the owner and creative director of a company, Celerity Sound. We are a small post-production audio company based right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, in addition to Celerity, I also work for another company called Soundcrafter, as well as freelance around town with a few other folks. So again, what we want to talk about today is the process of creating sound for film. And I think Ben and I kind of had the conversation that not everybody really understands what goes into making the sound for a film or a TV show that you see. So I'm going to walk you briefly through the process and then look at a couple specific projects. So first of all, uh, we're going to talk about how you actually get the sound. So the first step in that process is actually going on location or on set and usually holding a boom pole, kind of like the one you see me holding in this photo, and trying to capture uh, the sound of all the actors actually giving their performance on stage. So on a good day, you're gonna have one person holding a boom pole, putting it as close to them as possible and trying to capture the sound, and then usually also wearing a lavalier microphone, kind of like the one I'm wearing now, uh, to help capture the sound. And then you will usually have a second person running the controls, the production sound mixer. However, on most days, uh, you usually end up being a one-man band. So you can see here, uh, you'll be holding the boom pole over your head and having 20 to 50 pounds of gear that you lug around in the Texas heat. So not always the most uh, luxurious of jobs, but it's definitely a lot of fun. And the thing that's really interesting about production sound is you do actually have to be really creative and kind of be ready for the unknown. So on a really good day, you're going to set up your mics, you're going to capture every word that your actors are saying. Uh, but in reality, there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be technical issues, and you have to kind of be on your feet and think your way through the problems. Once you capture the sound, I think a lot of people don't really understand uh, that there's more to it than that. A lot of people I've talked to that have uh, no kind of insight into the filmmaking process will think that you set up mics, you record it, and you upload it to the internet, and that's what you hear. Uh, or when you go to the movie, that's all you're hearing. But there's a whole other side to the process, uh, which is post-production audio. So I will say as an audio professional, probably the scariest thing to hear someone say is this phrase right here, we can fix it in post. <laughs> the idea there is you're never going to get exactly what you want on location. Um, and that's why there is a whole other side to the process. Uh, the idea is there's going to be bumps, there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be things that go unexpectedly. And then uh, in post-production, we have the opportunity to fix all the mistakes that happen while you're making a movie. In a lot of ways, the post-production process is actually very technical. Uh, there's a lot of knobs that you have to know how to twiddle. Uh, and there's a lot of things you can do to kind of enhance the production audio. Uh, and then after that, you have to take all these different elements and put them together in a way that sound proper or at the right levels. However, it's also a really creative process. And that's kind of what really draws me to sound for film. That also brings us to a specific role in the post-production environment, which is a sound designer. And that's gonna pose our post first question today, which is what is a sound designer? And to do this, there's actually a couple of specific clips from some films I wanna talk about just to give you a little more insight into what exactly goes into making sound for film. The first clip we're gonna show is a, actually a UT student film by a director called Deepak Chetty. And the film we're gonna look at is Hard Reset. So this is a big sci-fi film. So really this is, I think, the personification of what a sound designer does. It's really big sound. There's all sorts of effects going on. And to kick that off, I want to show you a quick clip from that film. Tech Prime Unit 1277, Synth Corp has reported that one of its synths has gone offline. Please don't kill me. So this to me is kind of the personification of what a sound designer does. You know, you're going to capture actors talking, but then when you start creating a world on screen, you have to then fill that world with sound. 
So this film in particular gave me a really unique opportunity to kind of go in and think about what a world would sound like uh, and then fill it full of sound. So just you know, to look at a couple of frames, something like this, you have so much going on in the background. You have this entire world, a city, so you have to decide like, what a city sounds like in the future. And then you have to add all sorts of other elements, uh, for example, spaceships flying by. And you'll spend you know, days or weeks or months, depending on the project, going in and finding all these different sounds and kind of filling that space. So it's, it's really exciting, and I, I really like that in addition to the uh, technical aspect, you can kind of go in and be really creative uh, as a filmmaker. Again, you can see that right here, uh, this is just a quick shot from a project. And you can see there's just a ton of sounds going on in something like this. So it's really a lot of fun to kind of go in and piece all these little bits together and come up with something really cool. The next thing I want to do is, is go a little more in depth with another project that's actually very, very different. So what we're going to be looking at is uh, actually a documentary. Uh, it's called Canine Soldiers. It's by a local Austin director and UT professor, Nancy Chasseri. And um, the thing I really liked about this project is that when you're working on a documentary, a lot of times there's a lot less to do as far as sound design and it's more about fixing the issues. However, the really cool thing about this specific project is that it kind of opened up a unique opportunity for sound effects. So essentially the film is uh, following trainers and uh, working dogs in the military. So there's a lot of footage that is found footage uh, shot on GoPros and things like that. So it's really pretty sparse. So it really gives you a unique opportunity to kind of go in and uh, do things that I haven't done before, such as uh, actually recording dog footsteps and going through with an artist and kind of laying those into the whole thing, which is uh, pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you a quick clip just so you can get an idea of what the film's about and what it looks like. I was a combat engineer. And instead of sending a dog into a building to, to search for booby traps, the infantry team just ran inside and got blown up. We had to pick up chunks of wall to recover the bodies of three soldiers that went in there. I still have that image in front of me. But after that, I didn't want to do anything else. I work a dog. What we're training here are combat dog teams. We're trying to train them to the best of our abilities to be able to go out and to support uh, conventional and unconventional military. My biggest fear would be not finding something and it's right there. And then find out that someone was on that same route, that same area, and got killed. Because I've been blown up. I've seen people blown up. I've seen people die from them. So I have no hesitations going out to find IEDs whatsoever. Contact! Is he hit? Bombs, death surrounds them. And in the middle of this is this powerful bond. What we've got is the militarization of love. That friendship, that bond in his eyes was more than I could ever ask for. So yeah, that gives you a little bit of a taste of what the project's about. So I want to use this as a bit of an example that we can kind of go through the process of what all goes into creating the sound for a film like this. So starting with the basics, Again, this is really unique because there were a lot of interviews that Nancy went out and shot, uh, but also it was comprised of a lot of found footage. So the Department of Defense actually makes available footage that is shot over in the war zones. So she pieced a lot of that together, uh, and then she followed a few of the specific trainers. And stateside, they would go and actually film them as they're training here. Uh, but when they went abroad, uh, a couple of the characters would actually bring GoPros and cameras with them and kind of film as they went along. So it gives you a really intimate look into the relationship that builds between these trainers and the dogs. Uh, but on a technical side, uh, there's a lot of issues that kind of come up when you have uh, footage coming from GoPros and things like that. So again, the first process, uh, the first part of the process is essentially going in and cleaning up all that audio and trying to make it salvageable, trying to make it sound as good as possible and make it sound consistent throughout. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to look at one specific little part of that clip we saw where you essentially have um, a couple of them actually going uh, out on a mission and they actually get uh, shot at by the enemies. And um, the main character, he actually had a GoPro on his weapon. So you kind of see it uh, from a POV. Uh, so this first clip I'm going to play you is what the audio sounds like uh, without anything else added. So I'll take a look at that first. Jim! Hey, dudes, I'm moving! Roger. Give me your 16. I keep jamming on me. So again, you can see it's a, a pretty intense situation. 
Uh, and again, from a technical standpoint, this gives you a really good basis. I can actually hear what the people are saying. And the gunfire you hear, uh, if you actually see the movie in a theater, a lot of it is actually coming from what was actually happening in the environment. So it's, it's uh, pretty exciting. This right here is what I would typically get on a project as far as a production audio. So in this case, the picture department will give me 12 tracks of audio with a whole bunch of little files. And the first part of the process is then gonna be going through and cleaning up every little click and pop and bump and thump that you hear in those tracks and trying to remove those and just get kind of the core essence of what actually happened while they were filming. So again, in this case, it's focusing on the voice, trying to get rid of any of the bad sounds you hear in the background, and then kind of filling in any of the gaps that didn't necessarily get recorded. However, this is just one part of the process. And again, a lot of times on documentaries, it's really keeping it basic. You'll have the production audio, maybe add three, four, maybe five sound effects for the whole film, and then put in some music. Uh, but in this film, again, it's so intense and the environments they're in, they just didn't feel exactly right for the kind of energy you're supposed to have while you're watching these images. So you can see that little top section right there is the production audio that we were looking at back here. Uh, and then everything below it is all the sounds we actually added in. So there was a lot of work that went into this you don't normally get to do in a documentary and it's probably what really drew me to this project. The first thing you're going to do as a sound professional is start by adding some sound effects. Uh, main reason for this, you generally as a sound professional are going to build up a massive library of sounds to have everything from horn honks to explosions to uh, backgrounds of various cities. A lot of times though you can't necessarily find the exact sound you want. So then there's going to be a couple different options. One of those is actually going out into the world uh, and recording sounds. So if you're working on a film and you really want to have the sound of a jungle, uh, you're going to go into a jungle on a raft and record those sounds. So that's where it gets to be really fun. And again, I haven't done this personally, but I know there's another uh, sound team that closed down uh, a park and essentially rode roller coasters all day to get the sounds they needed for a specific film. <laughs> so again, you definitely get to do some pretty cool things. For this scene, again, the idea was there's a lot going on, but it was a little bit bare. And they were actually in a gun battle, and um, apparently there were actually people firing back, but that just doesn't really pick up on a small camera like a GoPro. So. Uh, what we did, we found a background of just distant gunfire and layered that in underneath. So it's going to be really quiet. But essentially, it's just filling up the space a little bit more. As you have all the gunfire coming from the actual cameras, and then you'll just have a little bit of distant gunfire kind of layered in the background. But on this specific film, again, the sounds that I was trying to find are something you can't really find in a library. And if you go out and just record a bunch of sounds, they don't necessarily work, uh, which is why we actually did a lot of Foley recording. So Foley is, again, probably one of my favorite parts of the post-sound process. And essentially what you're doing, you go into a studio, you pull up the video that you're working on on the screen, and then you have a Foley artist. Uh, Susan Fitzsimon is a local uh, Foley artist that I work with on a lot of films. Uh, and you actually work with her and she will recreate the action in the studio along with what's going on. So again, that's everything in this film from footsteps of the soldiers uh, to just their gear moving uh, to uh, interacting with their weapons to, I think the coolest thing on this one was actually recording dog footsteps. So we spent probably a couple hours going through the entire film and she had these little gloves and she would actually go in and recreate the footsteps of all the dogs and all the different surfaces. So when you see the dog running on the gravel, catching a ball, Susan would actually sit there with her fingers in gravel and actually recreate the footsteps of all the dogs. So again, this is something you don't normally get to do in a documentary, but when I first sat down and watched this, it just felt missing. Because again, you'd see all these dogs and they were really important characters, but the cameras they were shooting with over there just didn't pick up any of the sound at all. So that was a really fun thing. And then on top of that, after we finished all the footsteps, you go through and she had these set of keys that sounded like a dog collar. So throughout the entire film, whenever the dogs are moving, she would actually sit there and jingle the keys uh, in sync with what was going on. And that's the really cool thing about Foley, is again, effects libraries are great, they're easy, you can grab sounds, throw them in a film, and it sounds more or less like what you want, but there's certain things out there that you just can't get from a library. And that's where, again, Foley comes in and, and why it's definitely my favorite part of the process. And uh, if you ever get to watch a Foley artist work, it's kind of silly, but it's, it's a lot of fun to kind of see the result. So again, I want to kind of go back to this same clip so we can take a look and see what that Foley, uh, sounds like by itself, and then we'll kind of hear it mixed in with everything else.
just this one scene, we probably spent an hour recording the sounds and then another you know, two hours cutting them all in. It's a little quiet, but essentially you have the first layer of the two soldiers walking on the gravel. And then as they go down, she'll actually make a scuffle sound of them actually laying down. And then the same thing for the dog, you'll have the dog kind of moving around and then the collar and then also their gear just moving around. And then she has, I think the funniest thing, this one gun prop that she uses for every film that we've worked on, including hard reset together uh, to make the gun sounds. And it just has this like super loose, funny sound to it, which talking to her, the funny thing is she, she mentions the point that, you know, guns don't normally rattle that much if they're working properly. But uh, it, it's really fun to see her just kind of sit there and jiggle it and get just the right sounds you need. So again, I really like talking about this film just because it's a little out of the ordinary. Again, normally if I get a film like this, I would sit down, again, edit the dialogue, add in some background effects, maybe add a couple sound effects and call it a day. But this just, you know, really called for a lot more. And then if you don't mind, I'll get you to turn this one up a little bit and then we'll talk, take a look at the clip of what it sounds like uh, with everything kind of pulled together. Hey, dudes, I'm moving! Give me your 16. I keep jamming on me. Contact! Is he hit? All right, so there you go. So that's kind of an example of, you know, the whole process of going from having some uh, just basic audio that you have on set and then kind of identifying what's missing and finding out creative ways to kind of fill in that space. Uh, and then also music does become a part of that. So the other part of the process after you do sound design, after you do all the editing is mixing. And that's another really fun part of the process. It's also where it becomes very collaborative with the filmmaker. The idea is me as an audio professional, my job is to look at a project and kind of decide how it should feel and what elements you want to hear going on. Uh, and then during the mix, you have the process of sitting down with the filmmaker and kind of lining up your creative take on it with their idea for the film, which, which can be a lot of fun. So again, this is just one example, and it's just a way I want to get everybody kind of tuned in to uh, the really big role that sound can pay, play on film. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot for having me out.